Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a closer look at the eccentricity of an orbit. So here we have equations that by now we're familiar with because we've covered them before, but we typically write the eccentricity of the orbit in terms of this equation right here, where we have the uh, A uh, representing the semi-major axis, R representing the distance from the major, the large object at the center, or kind of at the center, like the sun, and the, the distance from there to the planet. And then we have the eccentricity here and the cosine of the angle theta with the angle of the horizontal axis to the, uh, to the position vector of the planet relative to the star or to the sun. Then we also know that the ratio of the semi-minor axis to the semi-major axis is equal to the square root of 1 minus e squared. We can also write the eccentricity in these two equations, which is what I typically use, it's kind of easy to use these two equations, or we also know the relationship between A, the semi-major axis, and the properties of the, uh, of the two objects, the larger object, the smaller object mass, we have the total energy of the small object of the planet, and the G, which is the universal gravitational constant, and also the ratio of b squared over a, where b is the semi-minor axis and a is the semi-major axis, in terms of the angular momentum, g, small m, and large m. So we're going to go ahead and use those properties now, those, those relationships, to come up with an equation for the eccentricity that describes eccentricity in terms of the mass of the planet, the mass of the sun, the angular momentum of the planet and also the total energy of the planet. So we'll see how we can derive that. So we're going to start with this equation right here, which is the same as this equation right there. And now we're going to square both sides. So when we do that, we get b squared over a squared is equal to 1 minus e squared. And then we solve this for e, the eccentricity. So we have e squared is equal to 1 minus b squared over a squared. And since I have this relationship right here, we're going to write this as 1 minus b squared over a times 1 over a. And now we're going to substitute what these two fractions are equal to. So now we have e squared is equal to 1 minus, so b squared is defined right here, so that is equal to l squared divided by g small m squared big M, so that's the mass of the planet, the mass of the sun, times 1 over a, now of course a is equal to this, so 1 over a will be the inverse of that. So we need a minus sign, we have twice the total energy, divided by g m big M. Okay, at this point we're going to combine that by multiplying these two out, and this negative, and this negative of course becomes a positive. So now we have e squared is equal to 1 plus 2 times the total energy, times the angle of momentum squared, divided by, we have g squared, big M squared, little m cubed. Then of course we take the square root of both sides, now I have e is equal to 1 plus twice the total energy, angle of momentum squared, divided by g squared, m squared, little m cubed, all to the one half power. And so now you can see that you can also calculate the eccentricity of the orbit by knowing the total energy of the planet, the angular momentum of the planet, the mass of the sun, and the mass of the planet. And so here's another way of looking at eccentricity. 